Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keyes. Today, I've got a comparison. We're gonna talk about upsizing images, why you wanna upsize images, but more importantly, two ways to do it. I'm gonna show you one way through Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw, and one way through Topaz Gigapixel. So stay tuned for the comparison right after this. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about upsizing. And be, before I get to the products and the comparisons, you know, I love my comparisons. What I'm gonna just real quickly go over is why would you wanna upsize an image? So there's a couple of reasons. And, and most of the time we do this to print. So we wanna take an image that may not have the resolution we need to print large, and we wanna increase, we wanna add pixels to it. So we wanna get more pixels, more density, to fulfill the needs we have to print. So I'll give you a couple examples of that when I get to the two images that I'm gonna show you today. The other reason we may wanna do this is just to, to display digitally. In the past, wasn't a big deal because monitors resolution, anything we sent, if we, if we sent a picture that was 1900 pixels wide, most monitors, if you displayed it at 100% would fill that monitor. So in other words, the number of pixels in your image would fill out the monitor. What's happened now with high resolution monitors, 4K and 8K, we may send an image that has fewer pixels than the monitor can handle. What I mean by that is if a monitor can handle 4,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 pixels wide, and you only send it 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000, your image will display this big on a screen that's this big. And if you had to fill it out, you would have to zoom. You would have to increase. So 100% is here, 125, 150. You're magnifying the image, which also means you're magnifying the pixels and that image would look pixelated on a large screen, right? So you send it, it only looks this big. So this really is only a factor when you're dealing with these really high resolution 4K and now sometimes these 8K monitors. And there are events that will display digital images. So they'll project your image up and galleries or scrolling, or maybe you're setting it up for yourself. Maybe you've got a display that you set up that you know scrolls your own images over there. So there may be times digitally where you may want a larger file, but for the most part, I think this applies to print. We wanna send a bigger file so that we can print larger. I'm not gonna go through DPI, dots per inch, and PPI and what all that means in this video, but there's plenty of information out there and in the future, I've got some videos coming up for that. All right, let me take you over first to um, Photoshop and I'm going to pull up an image. This is a yellow-throated warbler that I took the other day. I'm gonna show you two examples. This is slightly cropped. So I took this uh, with, a, with a crop sensor uh, sometimes when I shoot smaller birds, I'll use a crop sensor. And I was shooting a D500 today. Cropped down to about 4,000 pixels. I don't like to go too much lower than three or 4,000 pixels. So 3,000 is like my bottom range. 4,000 is kind of, you know, okay. But more pixels for me is better. If I can get a little bit closer to the birds, that works great too. So nice image. Um, but I wanted to make it bigger to print as an example. At 4,000 pixels, I think I could probably print this at around 11 by 14 and I'd be okay. But let's say I want to do 20 by 30 for some reason. Somebody loves this image and they want it big on their wall. Probably going to want to increase the resolution by upsizing it. So what do I do? Well, I open it in Camera Raw. You cannot do this through the plugin filter menu. You have to open the image in Camera Raw. And then I'm simply going to right-click. And right down here, there's something that says enhance. And when you hit the enhance, you'll see a little box here that says super resolution. And super resolution is simply, there's no adjustments here. It doubles the resolution. It takes the 4,000 pixels and makes it 8,000 pixels. And then increases obviously the height as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. I just wanna ballpark the time that it takes. It's, it's a pretty quick process. And then it's going to save this as a file. So I'll have to go in and find that file and open it up. I'll pause the video, I'll go ahead and do that now. And then I'm gonna come back and show you a second product. Okay, so I've got the image open. I'm gonna show you the first one. 
this, if I look and you can see my ruler across the top, but I'll go here to image and image size, just so you could see it about 4,000 pixels. And then the enhanced right here, I go to image size. It's going to be twice as big. Now you can increase the image size. I'll go back to the original. This is the smaller image. I could go right here and do image size and I could just double the pixels here. And in one of the comparisons, I am going to do that. I'm going to double the pixels there, and then I'm going to show you all of the layers and how they compare to each other. But before I get there, I do want to show you the second way that I'm going to show you how to upsize your images, and that is through uh, Gigapixel. So here I pull up Gigapixel, and on the left is the original, on the right is the preview. I'm using the newest version of Gigapixel. This is 5.5. This is a faster processing time. I, I actually tested this, and I will tell you, the first time I ran this through, um, it was about twice as long on the older version. When I upgraded the same image and did the exact same process, it was about twice as fast. Not quite, but almost. So it, this version is faster. One of the disadvantages, that enhance, that 2x enhance, it only took a few seconds. Um, I didn't count the exact time, but I would say maybe 10, 15 seconds, and that file was available. Here, it's going to take a little bit longer. And when I timed it out, uh, it took about 50 seconds to upsize this image to two. So by a factor of two. So you can see I'm using scale. I've got my head in the way. Maybe I can drag myself over here real quick. There we go. I've got scale here. I've got 2x. So it's the same. And it's got a couple different um, options here. One is for low resolution. Generally, if you're using a JPEG, I think that one works better. I'm going to use this under standard. And then I'm going to just hit this update button and let it render the image. So it's going to kind of give me a preview here of what it's supposed to look like. I've got all of the settings turned down to nothing. So suppress noise, remove blur, etc. Then I'm simply going to save the image, let it process and bring it over to Photoshop. I already told you that process takes about, it took about 50 seconds, about a minute to do it this way. So a little bit longer. And if you're using an older version, it will take you even a little bit more. So I'm going to pause this now again. I'm going to pull this version up to Photoshop and then we'll compare. Okay, so I, I did both uh, functions. I've ran them through. The image is now twice as big as it was before, as, twice as wide as it was before. And um, here's what I came up with. So the first layer here is the Enhanced 2X with a caveat here. In my processing for this image, I ran it through um, Denoise um, Clear AI. So I want to put that out there because I forgot. With my other image, I'm going to show you, I didn't process it at all. But with this one, I processed it first and then upsized it. So this would kind of be like, I guess, best case. By the way, I'm a Topaz affiliate. Uh, this Denoise product is my favorite product that they have. I, I love it. I always tell everybody, I'll put a discount code in there at the bottom for any of the products. So if you're interested in this Gigapixel product as well, it'll work for that. But um, love the Denoise product. I ran that through first and then I did the upsizing. So this is the 2X here. And I'm really zoomed in now. And then that is the Topaz product on top. So again, first one, enhance Adobe Camera Raw. Second one, very little difference very little difference. I think there's a slight, slight sharpening that took place with the Adobe, uh, I'm sorry, with the Topaz. Slightly more sharp, and that's about it. Both products did a really good job. For comparison, this is the original. So what you'll see is when I zoom into the original, you'll start to see pixelation at some point. This is uh, magnified at 300%. And then again, these are only magnified at 150% because I double the resolution. But when you look at that, you know, that's the original. That's the upsized and enhanced. So you didn't lose much when it did this. It, it held on both products, hang on to the integrity of the upsized pretty well. All right, so that's where we're at. Now, let me pause this and I'm going to take you over to another, one more set of videos or one more set of images. All right, and here's a Louisiana water thrush. So again, I just kind of, these are recent images that I captured. So I just thought I would pull them up and um, this one was cropped quite a bit more. So I wanted to see like what happens if I overcrop, I cropped this one down to 2000 pixels 
and then try to upscale it back to kind of where I would like to have gotten originally, which is about 4,000 pixels. So I cropped this in. Uh, this actually is a much more environmental picture. I just overcropped it for the sake of, um, for, uh, for this illustration. And I did not process this one. So no adjustments at all. I did a couple, uh, you know, camera raw adjustments to exposure, but no, no, no Topaz product on this. This is just kind of straight upsizing. First thing I did is I just resized it using Photoshop. So you go up here to image where it says image size. And I just took the 2300 pixels or so, and I just doubled them and I made it 4,600, locked the aspect ratio at 3000 uh, pixels per inch. And here I am. That's what came out. All right. Now let's see what 2X did compared to just Photoshop upsizing. Is it any better than just upsizing in Photoshop? And the answer is, is really yes. It did a little bit better job. So look around the eye. You're going to see a little bit here. And I know it's a little bit hard in these YouTube videos. So you'll, you may have to take my word for it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and there it tightened up the pixels a little bit. So instead of enlarging it, it held on to the details of the original a little bit better. When I just did the Photoshop, it, it made it a little softer. Um, so yeah, I think the 2X did a better job. Now, what about Gigapixel? So let's go into that same area with Gigapixel. There it is. Sharpened it up a little bit more. So there's the Enhance and there's the Gigapixel. Uh, the background noise seemed to be about the same on both. So I did not use any noise reduction. And I did not use any noise reduction in Gigapixel. The one advantage you have in Gigapixel is the ability to use those noise reduction sliders to suppress noise if you choose. And I'll show you an example of that at the end. All right. So, um, yeah, I would say Gigapixel slight advantage here. You know, just a slight advantage. Not huge. But here's the advantage, I think, with Gigapixel over Enhance. Enhance, there's no sliders. There's no adjustment. It literally just doubles the, the pixel uh, resolution. Gigapixel, I have the ability to add sliders. So what I did is I put in noise suppression and I, I dialed it up to 100%. So this is it. That's 100% noise reduction. So not only did it enlarge it, but it then added noise reduction. Now, one of the things I will tell you when I work in Photoshop, I like to work in these layers and I like to work with noise reduction on a layer underneath a layer that has no noise reduction. So the exact same frame, the exact same layers, two layers, one with noise, one without. And the reason is because sometimes I like to go back. If it's too glossy and too clean, I can pull some of that out. It'll retrieve a little bit of the details and add a little bit of noise back in there. So it allows me the ability to kind of selectively change the opacity, or I could also mask. So if I wanted to mask out some of the noise reduction, like if I liked the way it looked on the eye, I could mask in the original eye without the noise reduction or around some of the feathers. So just, just my preference, I recommend everybody, um, if, you don't, if you're not working in Photoshop, um, the real power is in the ability to control layers independently of each other. So, uh, and I really do like it there. So advantage really here, uh, Gigapixel because of the flexibility to add noise reduction. So a lot of people at the end wanna, wanna say like, well, Give me the recommendation. Tell me what to do. I've done three videos on Topaz products. Uh, I did Sharpen. You can check all of those out. I'll put some links up here at the top. I did one on Sharpen AI. I did one on Denoise AI. This is the third one I'm doing on Gigapixel. Uh, I specifically wanted to do the Gigapixel comparison because of that Adobe Camera Raw. In the past, my opinion was Gigapixel was way better than just the Photoshop upsizing. So Photoshop double the resolution. There are other upsizing programs out there. I have not used them. Uh, I've read or watched a lot of comparisons on YouTube. Topaz generally comes out on top. I think with every one I've seen, they either said Topaz was equal to or better than any other product out there. So I'm going to take their word for it on that. Uh, my example is compared to the Photoshop upsizing, it was always better. So that's what I used if I had to upsize. Now, when Adobe Camera Raw came in and said, we've got this 2X feature, how does that stack up? Well, it did a pretty good job. It did better than their original Photoshop. And um, it's pretty close to Topaz. The difference is it doesn't give you the ability to have that extra control on sliders for noise reduction. So would I, would I endorse it? Would I tell you to go out and buy it? Well, yes, but here's the thing. I don't want people to think because I'm a Topaz affiliate, I'm gonna push products from them. What I, what I am gonna do 
is be real honest with people. I'm going to tell you, get denoise AI first. If you're on a limited budget, get denoise AI because it does a little bit of sharpening. It does the noise reduction. It's like a one-stop shop. It's, it's a great product. If you have the in your budget, the next product I would get from Topaz would be the Sharpen AI as a recovery tool. If you don't, if your pictures are coming out of camera and you just want a little pop, you, you may not need Sharpen AI, but it does work well as a recovery tool. Little motion blur, a little out of focus. You want to clean up. It's more powerful than the other sharpening tools. Um, and I've done a video on sharpening and compared all those as well. Now, Gigapixel would be the next choice only because you can get upsizing now in camera raw that is pretty close to Topaz. You just don't get the flexibility with it. So if you've got expendable income, get them all, get the suite. It's a great value. But I will tell you, I'm a very value conscious person. Uh, I would get Denoise first, Sharpen second, Gigapixel third in that order. And uh, that's my recommendation. If you uh, are interested in the product, again, I'll put a coupon code down there with a link it works on anything Topaz. So go down there, shop around, see if there's anything else in there you like. But those are the three products that uh, I've done the videos on. And I uh, hope you enjoyed them. As always, I do these comparisons. I think people like the side-by-side. -side, so I hope you like those too. And I uh, hope you have a great day. And I hope you can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.